Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. If there's anybody listening right now that disagrees with me, I want to hear it. And here's, here's my statement. We all have to heal from something. There's something going on from our past, maybe our childhood that prevents us from moving forward in our life now. And if you say to that, ah, that's not true, I'll uh, bet you're wrong. You probably don't realize that something's going on there and maybe you don't realize why am I not finding the right relationships? Why am I not moving my life forward? Now, we're going to talk about that today and also the energy healing surrounding it. And we've got somebody who has an amazing psychotherapy practice called Center Point. It's Integrative Health and Counseling Center. It's in Huntington, New York, but she works with people all over the world. And she's back with us. Dr. Irene Siegel is on the program. Welcome. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Steve. It's great to have you here. And I'm a big proponent. Yes, modern medicine, pharmaceuticals, they all have a place in this world. You know, mm -hmm. Take them when you need them. But do you really actually need them? Maybe maybe you need some counseling and can kind of navigate the whole life thing. Um, what do you hear now, Irene, from patients? What are mostly people are going through? Is it anxiety, um, feeling that they're not good enough, maybe depression? Well, I'm a trauma expert. I'm an EMDR consultant. So people come to me specifically for EMDR. But a lot of people are being re-traumatized from early trauma just because of the collective trauma we've been experiencing in our world between going through a period of pandemic, financial upheaval, political upheaval, social racial upheaval. People are having difficulty coping in the world. So there is a lot of anxiety. And the anxiety could always be tracked back to a source, whether it's something current or whether what's happening now is a trigger for an earlier trauma. So a lot of people are coming into therapy these days because they're having trouble coping with what's happening in our world. Do you feel that COVID was the big shakeup? And then, then when the dust started to settle, that's where people started realizing, I can't, I can't handle this. And, and of course, with COVID, relationships changed. People had different outlooks on life thinking, you know, what? I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to change in this direction, but that affects somebody else, but I don't really care. Um, yeah. All of that. Do you think it was because of that? Well, the co some people were having trouble coping with COVID only because they were more socially isolated. Other people that have actually had COVID still may be suffering from symptoms of long-term COVID. Mm. And I have found that people come into therapy because they can't handle the emotional aspects of long-term COVID. It triggers deeper fear in them. It triggers early childhood trauma. And those that end up in my office because they have symptoms of long COVID always can be tracked back to earlier feelings of insecurity and unsuredness within themselves. I guess where I'm going there is that stuff was always there. And then COVID kind of, it was under the rug. And then COVID's the wind that blew the rug over. And then all this stuff came to surface because it was hiding underneath there for a while. That's exactly what happened. That's exactly mm -hmm. what happened. And some people have been traumatized by COVID itself. Sure. You know, there are current traumas. But yeah, when someone has had multiple trauma, it just um, exacerbates their mental health system, you know, systems and, and their symptoms. When you say uh, EMDR, uh, explain that, please. Well, EMDR stands for Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing. It's an eight-phase brain-based protocol specifically developed for the healing of trauma. And what we do is we get to the root of the trauma. We use bilateral stimulation. It could be either eye movement or it could be music. I personally like music because my clients can wear headphones. Music goes from ear to ear. I can do this even over Zoom, you know, remotely. And when we integrate the bilateral stimulation with an eight phase protocol, we're actually accessing the stored memory of trauma that has been stored in the back of the brain and we bring it into the frontal lobe where it can now be reprocessed and people can get through trauma fairly quickly with that process i've been doing emdr for a long time and believe me i've been a therapist for a really long time but when i took the emdr training which was i believe it was in 1996 i never looked back 
And then I have found my own way to create a more integrative approach with energy and mindfulness and resonance. Hmm. So EMDR in itself, fantastic, but then you, yes. you, you bag it up with even more in terms of energy. Yes, like absolutely. Hmm. Absolutely. Can you do EMDR remotely? I've been doing it, I mean, since the okay. pandemic. And many therapists said, how can we do this remotely? And you know what? We made it work, and it really does work. Wow. So I still work remotely with people because there's a lot of people that either live too far from my office to come in or they want their session in the middle of their workday and they don't have the time to come in. And it's been very effective. Surprisingly, to all of us EMDR therapists, it's been extremely mm -hmm. effective. Wow. So let's talk about the energy part of the energy healing component of what you do, you know, whether you pair it with EMDR or not. Sure. And, and yes, you don't have to be an EMDR therapist to integrate this, but I'll tell you a little bit about my background and how sure. I got to this place. When I was, even when I was a kid, I was a meditator. You know, people will ask me, when did you start meditating? And I'll say, when I came out of the womb, you know, basically I was in that meditative space. And then as I got older in my twenties, I started studying with teachers that guided me to South America. I worked with, with master healers of ink and descent. I've worked with other teachers in North America and I learned their ways of healing, which is all about energy. I definitely believe in a mind body spiritual approach, but that body part isn't just about physical body. It's about the energy bodies that surround the physical bodies. And I have learned and become very sensitive to picking up on what's held in the shared field. So what I do in my therapy sessions and what I actually teach other therapists to do is to be aware of getting into a quiet, mindful state themselves and with the client so that they could perceive the flow of energy in the shared field. And if a therapist has been meditating for a long time, it's a little bit easier. If not, they can practice and they can learn this. So when a client comes in to see me, I use the standard EMDR protocol. But what I love about the protocol is that there's a lot of silent space in that protocol while clients are processing trauma. So we identify the trauma, we identify the negative beliefs that they've held about themselves as a result of the trauma, such as I'm helpless, I'm powerless, I'm not lovable, I'm not good enough, whatever it might be. And we go into silent processing space with the bilateral stimulation. It's in those silent spaces that I teach my clients to be comfortable with those spaces, to let their imagination go, and I sink into those spaces with them. Now, since I've been a meditator for a long time, I teach meditation. I know healing techniques in the energy medicine world. I can sense a flow of energy between myself and the client. And with mm -hmm. that, as I hold myself stable in that, the client learns to do the same. Their imagination takes off and healing skyrockets. And what happens is the client starts to sense even what's happening in the shared field. And they might say something about it. And I just tell them to go with it and to just expand their awareness. So they can actually go from negative beliefs, I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, to an awakening of spiritual consciousness that happens within the therapy session. And I think I mentioned this last in the last podcast with Jill, that my clients might come in with a negative feeling of I'm not lovable. They realize they're lovable. Then they'll say to me, I am light. They'll say I am. And they perceive themselves as their own energy body. And it's pretty miraculous when that happens. And I just hold a stable field and I let them just explore that. Do you feel lots of questions, by the way, Irene, and thanks for explaining it because it's, it's coming even, and I'm a student of this, it's coming clearer mm -hmm. for me. Do you feel that when you start a session with somebody, we all have these walls up, you know, it just, maybe we'll give up a little bit. Do you feel that you're able to kind of lower the, I call it, I call it the window, like in a car, get the window up, maybe comes down uh -huh. a little bit, you little, little somebody in, 
or your your <laughs> personal feelings out. Do you feel that when you're in a session with somebody, they kind of bring the window down and you're able to have that dialogue, meaning that you're able to kind of touch a little deeper into what's going on so you can help them figure out what has happened in their lives? Well, that's why they're coming to me. So I try to make them feel as comfortable as I can. I create a comfortable, safe space in the session itself. And I ask questions about their history, about their trauma history. And when you ask a question about it, it gives them permission to then talk about it. And when they talk about it and they see that I'm not judging them, I'm not shocked by what they're saying, then they feel a sense of relief that they can talk about it. And then their defenses start to come down. You mentioned I am before mm -hmm. and just starting to learn about those two words and how powerful and empowering it is. Can you explain that a little bit? Well, when my clients say it to me, I want them to explain it based on their own experience. Okay. okay. And what they explain, and it does parallel some of the spiritual teachings, but when you read about spiritual teachings, you get a really, um, the I am experience in terms of spiritual teachings is really about beyond soul connection, just being one with spirit, you know, being, being separate from your identity in the everyday world and recognizing that your identity really is your connection to spirit. When a mm -hmm. client says it to me, they may not mean it exactly in that way. It could just mean for them that all of a sudden they perceive themselves as, as light, as energy in a flow. And they're just focused in that moment. And it's a tremendously healing experience. And they start to awaken consciousness. They start to realize themselves beyond the physical world, beyond the identity of their personality. So, so the I am, in spiritual teachings is a much broader perspective. But with my clients, however they mean it is fine. Whatever that experience is for them is fine. And I will talk to them about it. And it really means for them that all of a sudden, they're just present in, they're just present. They're present in that moment and they're not attached to ego or outcome and they are just there. Do you feel when they get to that that point that all of this stuff out here that that bothers us just goes away. It's almost as if I got this. I can navigate this now. I personally call it my quiet calm. Like I used to worry about things. You have no idea. Completely flip mm -hmm. that around to the point where it looks like, yeah, something happens. Used to throw me. And I'm talking like even three years ago. Now it's like, yeah, we're good. We'll get paid. We'll figure it out. You know, I guess it's maybe confidence, faith or whatever, but it's like the quiet calm. Would you say they, they, they explain it kind of the same way where I call it live in the moments, but it's just like, I'm good now. I got this. Well, it's not even that they have to explain it to me. They just start changing. Uh, that's, that's totally what I mean as well. Yeah. 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 And, and they're able to see because EMDR is very measurable. I'm able to point out to them how much they've changed and mm. how much they have reprocessed their trauma and they are responding differently in their world. So somebody can't heal and even awaken without changing their perspective of how they see themselves in their world and how they perceive their world. So as I said, EMDR is a brain-based therapy. We go from a place of experience where there's not there isn't a cohesiveness within them between the mind body and spirit and now all of a sudden there's a flow and in that flow they are different hmm. and so they can see it and they can talk about it but it's more in sharing their experience and even sharing their experience in the session that i see they are changing, they are different. And sometimes I have to even point it out to them because EMDR is such an organic process, clients don't realize they're changing. So that's why it's very measurable. We go back to the mm. original trauma, we make sure there's no more stress, we reinforce a positive belief about themselves until it feels completely true. And the brain is aligning itself, the neural networks of the brain is aligning itself with the positive perceptions and neutralizing the negative triggers. 
with your experience, lots of years in, in all of this, do you find you're at the point now where when you meet somebody that, that comes to you for help, that you already pick up on their energy, you're already kind of, you're kind of a few steps ahead just because you're able to read the energy? As soon as they walk in the door, as soon as they call me on the phone, you know, yes, I mean, I've been doing it a long time. Not only have I been a therapist a long time, I've probably been teaching meditation and healing for as long as I've been a therapist. And so I can sense the energy right away. And because I'm a trauma specialist, I do get some clients that have had a great deal of trauma in early childhood, a great deal of trauma. And so as we work on healing that for them, their energy just changes. They start to connect more to their body, to their emotion. There's mm. more of a flow. They relax. They relax. So it's, it's not hard to sense that. And I teach other therapists how to sense this on an energy level. So it's not just intuition, although that's part of it. Mm -hmm. It's really kind of sensing the energy in the field. Yeah. It's for anybody that is listening, watching, and hearing what we're saying and thinking, these two people are kooky. <laughs> what are they talking about? <laughs> well, consider this. You ever go to a party, you walk in, and you say to yourself, wow, that's kind of feel, feels good. I'm going to hang for a while. It's good. Like nice mix, mix of people, as opposed to walking into a party and everybody's got a face. It just seems like, I don't know, the air is thick. I think I'm going to give an excuse and get out of here. It's because the energy of the people in there collectively is very low, low mm -hmm. vibration. And that's why it doesn't feel right. That's well, that's it. Right? That's it. And you know, in ancient wisdom traditions, they say that everything is energy. Yeah. Everything. Oh, this piece and of paper is energy. We're, everything. We're all different energy, but yeah, everything is energy. Yeah. Yeah. And if you could sense the energy, then you could shift something in yourself so that you don't start to resonate with a lower frequency. You want to stay in a centered place so that so you're resonating with what I call spiritual resonance, the consciousness, higher consciousness of spiritual connection or cosmic connection, even in the midst of someone that has a lower energy. So as a therapist, if I was going to resonate with every client that walked into a session with me, I'd be exhausted by the end of the day. But I stay in my own energy and I can just be there and be present with the client and they start to lift their frequency as we do the work together. Hmm. When you talk about meditation, I know lots of us struggle with it. And sometimes we overthink it, like thinking that, hmm, I got to get in a Zen moment here and I get it. Meditation could be walking your dog and just thinking about one thing, right? Well, that's, that is more of mindfulness. You know, you would call that mindfulness being present in the moment and mindfulness or originally came from Buddhism. Um, we use it here in the United States really to just reflect being present in the moment. And that can be really healthy for people. It's, it's not mm -hmm. even a structured meditation. It's just being quiet and present in the moment. But even if someone wants to formally meditate, there's a variety of different kinds of meditation. Sure. And they need to find what's right for them. That was my aha moment, Irene. Uh, my journey, this current change here, about three years ago, and I met somebody that said, why don't you ever live in the moment? And this was somebody that, you know, we'd have fun together. And, and I'm like, what are you talking about? And I had to process it for a couple of days. And then I got it. It's like, yeah, because I'm always thinking about the past or I'm thinking about the future. And you know, what's the future? Can be a little anxiety like what i wonder if what's going to happen or the past or you know it could be depressing or whatever um then i got like oh just live now because this is the most important thing here because you can't do anything about then and later might not even show up in this in the way you're thinking about it what's even the point and if you can stay in the moment fear does not exist in the moment exactly fear only exists when you ruminate about the past or you're fearful of the future if you're in the moment, fear doesn't exist. Yeah. it Easier said than done to get there. I get that. Easier said than done. And you could do it through different venues. You could do it through a psychotherapy process. You could do it through working with a meditation teacher. 
I'm going to give you a really quick example. Sure. In one of my trips to South America, I was with a group. Um, my teacher was Alberto Vialdo, and he was having us work with his teachers in South America. And I, we were flying from from Lima to Cusco on a really small plane. And Cusco is very high in altitude with a short runway. And we're coming in, and the plane is really shaking and shaking and shaking. And I'm sitting next to one of the other people in in the group he's very serious and i and i looked at him and very glibly i said wouldn't it be ironic if we come here we're coming here to face our death to not fear death wouldn't it be ironic if we die and he just turned at me and he said are you afraid to die and i said and i realized i was so in the moment that i said no i'm not afraid to die and if it's meant for me to die today so be it because I was just in the moment doing uh -huh. exactly what I needed to do in that moment. And that was my spiritual path. I totally got you there. And there's been moments where I thought, well, you know, people like, well, it's a lightning storm coming on. I was at a concert a couple of weeks ago. There was a storm, it, it rained and it was fun. And there was a couple of you know, flash of lightning and they had to pause the concert. Um, I don't know, 20 minutes or whatever. And people are freaking out about the lightning and I'm like, it's far away. This is just a precaution. And if it's going to strike here, what are you going to do? <laughs> I can't change it. That's right. the, it, if it was meant to be that way, then it's meant to be that way. Yeah. And that's being in the moment. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. How does it work with you? Somebody wants to change their life. They're hearing about this stuff, the mindset, the whole everything. How does the process start with you? Well, I get a lot of phone calls for therapy and, and you probably know at this point that there's more clients than there are therapists in the world at this point. Um, but I have a lot of other venues that people can use. So I actually teach meditation. I've been teaching a, a Native American Indian sacred medicine wheel meditation. I had to take it online during COVID and now it's online because I have clients, students from all over the country, from Canada, from outside of the US, mm -hmm. and they can learn meditation with me. I work with the four directions of the medicine wheel. Once a month, which happens to be tonight, but if anyone is listening to a recording, it might not be tonight. Once a month, I do a free guided meditation for personal and planetary healing. Hmm. I'm doing that tonight. Anybody, you have to register, so you have to go to my website, uh, com, and register for it, but there's no fee for it. And throughout COVID, I was doing this weekly. I was doing, because not everyone can get into therapy and they needed some way to find that sense of inner peace. So I did this weekly, then I did this bi-weekly, now I've been doing it monthly. And then even online, I have some, um, some meditation programs that can be downloaded and people could purchase those. I don't charge very much for those programs. And that's one way of finding some inner peace. I speak next week, I'm speaking at a conference and I'm teaching therapists that way. And I do programs for therapists as well as meditation programs for the general public. And that's probably one of the best ways to work with me. What's your website? Dr. Irene Siegel. So that's D-R-I-R-E-N-E-S-I-E-G-E-L.com. And they could also learn more about me from my book. The Sacred Path of the Therapist, Modern Healing, Ancient Wisdom, and Client Transformation. And maybe next time we can talk more about the book. Sure. So I have one final question. Sure. When you talked about that story being on that plane, it reminded me of a song called Ironic by Alanis Morissette, came out in the mid-90s. And basically the one section of the song, similar to what you said, Mr. Play It Safe was always afra afraid to fly. He finally, you know, packed a suitcase, kissed the wife goodbye. He's on that flight. And as the plane started to crash down, he thought, well, isn't that nice? Isn't it ironic? I wonder, based on what we're talking about and energy and everything, is anything ironic? I think that if you are consciously on a spiritual path or a healing path, synchronicity starts to happen. Even Carl Jung talked about this, that when you work in that range of awareness, things don't happen just by coincidence. That's and when, when you set out to be on a spiritual journey or a healing journey, 
you start to see symbols of things in your world that have meaning to you. I have a lot of stories I could tell you, not for today. Oh my gosh, okay. I could go on too. And my, my favorite thing to say is ask for a sign, you'll get it. And I'm not going religion here, that, nothing about that. Just no. the universe that's there supporting you. But you got to be open to it. You got to be aware to it. You know, I ask for signs, I get them. And they're very specific. I don't always ask. I don't want to overdo it. Like three, right, right. You know, like the genie with the three, <laughs> three wishes. Right, right, right. But when you need that reassurance or you need just something, uh, you might get it if you're aware and watch it. If you're right? aware, right, right. That 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 response to me on that plane was exactly what I needed. I learned the lesson of that entire journey in that one moment. And I got you. I, I can put myself there. And I would say the same exact thing. It's like, what are you going to do? You're living here in the moment. If something is going to happen, it happened for a reason. There was no, you know, whoops. Right, right. It's refreshing and wonderful talking with you. And uh, I love your passion, but your clarity is so spot on. Uh, and this stuff is gets heavy. It's hard to understand for a lot yeah, of us. And, yeah. and thank, thanks for making it easy. I appreciate you being here. Well, thank you, Steve. I really enjoyed this. Same. All right. We'll talk soon, okay? Sounds great. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network.